Okay, good afternoon. Um, I'll be talking about photosynthesis. Yeah, so photosynthesis um, basically is a process by which plants obtain their food. All right? Plants are the only organisms capable of making their own food. And they do this with certain raw materials, namely carbon dioxide, water, and most importantly, sunshine or sunlight or any light that is bright enough. The plant will use the energy from it to produce um, carbohydrate, which is in the form of glucose. All right, so let's get into it. So photo means light. Synthesis means to build up, and photosynthesis. So what happens is that um, plants have this distinct green color, which is as a, as a result of a green pigment that is called chlorophyll, which is found in the chloroplasts of plant cell, and is widely distributed in the leaves. Because the leaves are the structures that the plant used to trap the sunlight. And each leaf is positioned at an angle where it gets maximum exposure to sunlight. So the water for this process comes from the soil. So the roots, they absorb the water from the soil with dissolved minerals in it. And then it's carried up the stem by a vessel called the xylem vessel. Now in plants, just like how we have the veins and arteries, veins usually carry deoxygenated blood, that is blood like up, that contain carbon dioxide from the respiration process, carried it to the lungs for it to be exhaled and gotten rid of. And the arteries usually carry the oxygen from the, the lungs to the different cells where they meet with the food and react to get the energy. So before all of that now, the plants would have been the, the vessel responsible for producing this energy. And so the sunlight, the sun's energy is trapped by the green pigment chlorophyll in the leaves. And this green pigment chlorophyll um, uses the sun's energy to split the water molecule into it, its component, namely hydrogen and oxygen. So, first thing, the water is absorbed from the soil by the roots, carried up the stem by the xylem vessel, up to the leaf in, and in the chloroplast cells where the chlorophyll would be located. And then the carbon dioxide now it diffuses into the, the plant via the leaves, the underside of the leaf, through some pores, tiny pores, which is which are called stomatas. Alright? So the carbon dioxide diffuses into the leaf directly by diffusion. And the water is carried from the soil by the roots and the xylem vessel up to the leaf where the chloroplast cells are. And then no uh, photosynthesis is it it occurs in two stages. You have a light stage, that's the whole trapping of the sunlight and getting the energy from it. And then you have a dark stage where this energy is used to split the water molecule. So when the water molecule is split, you will have hydrogen and then you will have oxygen. So the oxygen is released as waste product back to the atmosphere which is to our benefit because we need it for respiration. And then now the hydrogen now combines with the carbon dioxide and you get carbohydrate being formed. If you listen to the sound, the hydrate, the carbo, the combination of the hydrogen and the carbon dioxide, so you get carbohydrate, which is in the form of ox, which is, sorry, which is in the form of glucose. Now the plants, they're, are unable to store the glucose as is. So what they do, they use what they need for energy and the rest they convert to starch and stored for use later. Now, this starch that is um, 
produced from the glucose. It's carried by the phloem vessel. Remember, this, remember the xylem carries water, while the phloem carries dissolved food. So the phloem will now carry this food that is made by the plant to the different storage areas of the plant. Now, there are three main storage areas of the plant. They are like the leaves itself, like the cabbage, the callaloo, the pop chow. You understand? Broccoli, cauliflower, um, lettuce. Namely, most of the areas that we eat on the plant are storage area because, of course, that's where the food would be. So it's also stored in the stem, as in the case of the sugar cane that we eat. And also in the callaloo and the pop choker, we eat the stem too. And also the roots, like the carrot that we eat, the yam, the Irish potato, the turnip, all these things that um, are found in the root. So, photosynthesis, um, the word formula would be carbon dioxide plus water with sunlight being trapped by chlorophyll and then converted to glucose and oxygen. Now, the chemical equation would be just like a recipe where it says six cups of water to two teaspoonful of so and so. In the plants, now, the measurement is in molecules. So, the chemical equation for photosynthesis would be six molecules of carbon dioxide plus six molecules of water. Then you have the sunlight being absorbed by the chlorophyll. And then afterwards, on the product side now, the reactants would be the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, I mean the water and the carbon dioxide, and the sun's energy. And then the product would be the glucose, which would be C6H12O6. That's one molecule of glucose, which is C6 again, H12O6, plus six molecule of oxygen. That would be 6O2. All right? So let me um summarize it in a nutshell so sunlight absorbed by the leaves of the plant and then the energy from the sunlight is used to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen this water molecule comes from the soil absorbed by the root carried up the stem to the leaf by the xylem vessel and then when the water molecule is split the oxygen is released by the plant through the same stomata which the carbon dioxide travels through and back into the atmosphere. And then now the carbon dioxide and the hydrogen is combined in the dark stage, guys, two stage of photosynthesis. The light stage where you trap the sunlight by the, the leaves with the chlorophyll and the dark stage where the hydrogen combined with the carbon dioxide. And this now forms carbohydrate in the form of glucose, which is used for the plant for their respiration and the rest is converted to starch and stored by the plant. Okay, so that is photosynthesis in a nutshell. All right, and it's from this process, the energy is obtained that is passed along in the food web, the food chains and food web. All right, so I hope this makes it a little bit clearer for you all. All right, so take care and remember to keep tuned for more of my little um, tutorials on topics in integrated science.